So the big question is this, how do small businesses like yours, who feel like you're doing all the right things and going to all the right events, reach the federal buyer in a way that helps you win more contracts? That is the question, and this is the place to get your answers. My name is Neil McDonald. Welcome to the GovCon Chamber of Commerce. Okay, let's get started. In this learning series, I'll be helping you understand the Navy and providing guidance on how you can do your homework. This series is designed for those small businesses already making revenue, not those of you just starting off. While I think it'll be helpful for anyone to watch this series, if you aren't making profitable revenue, then you'd be better off watching videos designed to help you get into the government sector and to start making a living revenue. Throughout this series, I'll be using a company that provides cloud services as my example, seeking to show you how I would help them learn about the Navy and then pursue several million in new revenue over the 12 month period. My guidance will work the same whether you're a different type of service like janitorial or you're selling products or in the construction field. Before you have meetings with any potential buyer in the Navy or talk to potential teaming partners, you wanna do your homework. This helps you understand the customer's mission, learn typical terms and jargon used by them, and to begin to get an understanding of who buys what you sell. In this session, Navy 101, org chart, I'll introduce you to the Navy's organization from a high level. In future sessions, I'll do individual deep dives on many of the commands. My goal is to save you weeks of research effort in each of these videos. All information that I'm showing you here is straight out of official DOD and Navy websites. Government contracting is not a secret. It's just a process. An important part of the process is doing your homework. So let's go ahead and get started with Navy 101 org chart. First though, this content's brought to you by the GovCon Chamber of Commerce, the only organization dedicated to the success of all small businesses in the federal space with members from Guam to the US Virgin Islands and every single state in between. Each year, roughly $125 billion is awarded to small businesses as prime contractors. Our vision is to double that number by helping small businesses truly understand the process for success. Small businesses are the backbone of America. By helping you succeed further in government contracting, we'll be strengthening American communities together. My name is Neil McDonald and I've been where you are now. I've been a small business owner for 20 years, building two successful firms selling to the federal government. I've won subcontracts with small and large prime contractors. I've won prime contracts with defense and civilian agencies. I've done things right and I've gotten things wrong. The one thing missing though for me then and you now is an easy to follow process that'll lead to predictable success. That's my commitment to you. I'll provide the process. If you accept responsibility and don't blame others, you'll find you have the control to shape your future. One of the first interesting bits to know about the Department of Navy is that there's a difference between DON or Department of Navy and the Navy. The Department of the Navy is made up of the Navy and the Marine Corps. And I say this because sometimes people make the mistake of thinking the Marine Corps is under the Navy. It's like, no, it's under the Department of Navy. But it's important to just understand these basic little terms as you go into this customer. Today, we'll be talking about the um, Navy org chart, which I'll lay out below. Later in the series, we'll focus on the Marine Corps. Navy commands fall into two main groups, operational and administrative. Operational is the side of the Navy that carries out specific missions such as operations and exercises. Its top level consists of component commands. The administrative side takes care of personnel, education, training, repairs, and supply chains via shore commands, system commands, and type commands. At its simplest, the administrative commands are responsible for readiness and the operational commands are responsible for fighting our nation's wars. In preparation for this session, I struggled with how much information to provide you. I settled on a mission statement for each command, which I think will give you a very high level understanding of their responsibilities. If your goal is to turn the Navy into a 10 to $100 million customer, then investing this time to understand them is well worth your time. Let's look first at the component commands. As of 2020, there are eight Navy component commands and their commanders carry out operations within the designated areas of responsibility. 
Component commands have operational control over one or, or more of the seven numbered fleets. As an aside, uh, these guys, their areas of responsibility are tied up to the DOD combatant commands. In future sessions, I'll explain the command structure so you get a better grasp of those, those terms as well. We're just trying to get you used to different terms. For now though, the eight component commands are Fleet Forces Command out of Norfolk, Virginia. Um, Train certifies, provides combat ready forces to combatant commanders. In support of the Chief of Naval Operations, they plan and execute assigned service functions. They also provide operational planning and coordination support as well as planning and executing joint missions. Military Sealift Command, headquartered in Norfolk, Virginia, is the leading provider of ocean transportation for the Navy and the rest of the Department of Defense, operating approximately 125 ships daily around the globe. Naval Forces Central Command, based out of Bahrain, plans, directs, and enables full-spectrum naval operations with partners and allies to ensure maritime stability and security of theater sea lines of communication operating in the Arabian Gulf, Red Sea, Gulf of Oman, and parts of the Indian Ocean. Based in Pearl Harbor, Hawaii, the Pacific Fleet advances Indo-Pacific regional maritime security and enhances stability. They are the world's largest fleet command, encompassing 100 million square miles, nearly half the Earth's surface, from Antarctica to the Arctic Circle and from the west coast of the United States to the Indian Ocean. The Naval Special Warfare Command provides maritime special operations forces to conduct full-time spectrum operations unilaterally or with partners to support national objectives. This is where the SEALs live, based out of Coronado, California. From their headquarters in Fort Meade, Maryland, the Fleet Cyber Command's mission is to plan, coordinate, integrate, synchronize, direct, and conduct the full spectrum of cyberspace operational activities required to ensure the freedom of action across all of the Navy's warfighting domains in, through, and from cyberspace, and to deny the, the same to the Navy's adversaries. Naval Forces Europe, Africa, out of Naples, Italy, provides overall command, operational control, and coordination of U.S. Naval Forces in the European and African command areas of responsibility. Naval Forces Southern Command supports uh, U.S. Southcom joint and combined full spectrum military operations in order to enhance regional security and promote peace, stability, and prosperity in the Caribbean, Central, and South America regions. There are onshore installations and facilities that support the fleet's operating forces, ships, subs, etc., with repairs, fuel, ammunition, training, and medical help, among other things. The Chief of Naval Operations is the Senior Military Officer of the Department of Navy, responsible for the command, utilization of resources, and operating efficiency of the operating forces of the Navy and of the Navy shore activities assigned by the Secretary of the Navy. The Navy Personnel Command is responsible for the planning and programming of all manpower, personnel, training, and education resources for the U.S. Navy. This person leads more than 26,000 people engaged in the recruiting, talent management, training, and development of Navy personnel. The Bureau of Medical and Surgery ensures sailors, Marines, their families, and retirees are healthy, ready, and on the job, be it on land or sea. The Strategic Systems Programs develops, produces, secures, and provides life cycle support for the Navy's submarine launched fleet ballistic missiles, and strategic weapon systems. They execute the Polaris sales agreement with the United Kingdom and develop conventional hypersonic weapons. The Naval Academy is, well, it's the Naval Academy. The Naval Education and Training Command recruits and trains sailors, taking them from street to fleet by transforming civilians into highly skilled operational and combat ready warfighters while providing the tools and opportunities for continuous learning and development. The Office of Naval Intelligence collects, analyzes, and produces maritime intelligence and disseminates that intelligence rapidly to strategic, operational, and tactical decision makers to meet the Navy, DOD, and national requirements. The Navy Legal Service Command delivers in three core practice areas, military justice, operational law, and command advice, 
and legal assistance. The primary mission of the Navy Information Operations Command is to conduct information operations and to provide cryptologic and related intelligence information to the fleet, joint, and national commanders. The United States Naval Observatory strengthens national security and critical infrastructure by serving as DOD's authoritative source for the positions and motions of celestial bodies, motions of the earth, and precise time. As a continuously improving command, Naval Safety Command develops leading indicators of risks and hazards to empower all sailors, Marines, civilians, and their families to embrace a proactive culture of risk identification and management to achieve zero preventable mishaps. In 11 regions on 71 installations and with 53,000 employees, the Navy Installations Command facilitates the manning, training, and equipping of the Navy's forces, providing customer-focused, shore-based operations, facilities management, and quality of life products and services. The Naval Aviation Warfighting Development Center is the center of excellence for the Naval Aviation Training and Tactics Development. This center provides services to air crews, squadrons, and air wings throughout the United States Navy through flight training, academic instructional classes, and direct operational and intelligence support. Commander Operational Test and Evaluation Force ensures naval force can fight and win by evaluating warfare capabilities in realistic combat environments with fleet warfighters. War Naval Meteorology and Oceanography Command is responsible for command and management of Naval Oceanography Program, utilizing meteorology and oceanography, GIS, and precise time and astrometry to leverage the environment to enable successful strategic, tactical, and operational battle space utilization across the continuum of campaigning and at all levels of war, strategic, operational, and tactical. There are five system commands and they oversee the technical requirements of the Navy. Naval Sea Systems Command is comprised of command staff, headquarters, directorates, affiliated program executive offices and numerous field activities. Together, they engineer, build, buy and maintain ships, submarines and combat systems that meet the fleet's current and future operational requirements. Nearly one quarter of the Navy's budget passes right through Nav C. Formerly Spay War and now Nav War, the Naval Information Warfare Systems Command identifies, develops, delivers, and sustains information warfighting capabilities, supporting naval, joint, coalition, and other national missions. The Naval Supply System Command is headquartered in Mechanicsburg, Pennsylvania, and employs a diverse worldwide workforce of more than 22,500 military and civilian personnel. The NAVSUP and Nav Navy Supply Corps teams share one mission to provide supplies, services, and quality of life support to the Navy and joint warfighters. Naval Air Systems Command advances naval aviation solutions with urgency to ensure warfighter dominance against current and future adversaries in defense of our nation by delivering timely, effective, and sustainable naval aviation capabilities to ensure the warfighter's mission success and safe return home. Naval Facilities Engineer Command delivers best value facilities engineering and acquisition for the Navy and Marine Corps, unified commanders, and Department of Defense agencies through their five business lines, capital improvement, environmental, expeditionary, public works, and asset management. Marine Corps Systems Command is the acquisition command of the Marine Corps, serving as head of contracting authority and exercising technical authority for all Marine Corps ground weapon and information technology programs. Units operating together for a specific task, um, perhaps the air defense units within a carrier strike group, would receive a separate task unit designation. The commanders of each of those coordinates to make sure resources and procedures are compatible so it's easier for sailors to transfer from coast to coast or command to command. Type commands further break down to groups and ship squadrons or air wings. I'm sharing this information here as a way to quickly get you used to terms, but as a small business, there's a good chance you won't be knocking on the doors of type commands. Naval Surface Forces Atlantic mans, trains, and equips assigned 
surface forces, and shore activities, ensuring a capable force for conducting prompt and sustained operations in support of the United States national interest. More than 70 ship and 34 shore commands make up the Atlantic Surface Forces. You'll find a similar mission for the Naval Surface Forces Pacific. Naval Air Force Atlantic is responsible for six nuclear-powered aircraft carriers, 54 aircraft squadrons, 1,200 aircrafts, and 43,000 officers enlisted and civilian personnel based on the East Coast. It provides combat-ready, sustainable naval forces with the right personnel, properly trained and equipped, with a focus on readiness, operational excellence, interoperability, safety, and efficient resourcing. Naval Air Forces Pacific, based out of San Diego, California, has a mission to man, train, and equip deployable, combat-ready naval aviation forces that win in combat. They're both basically the, uh, both of these agencies operate the same, uh, just in different parts of the world. The submarine forces include attack, ballistic missile, and auxiliary submarines, submarine tenders, floating submarine docks, deep submergence vehicles, and submarine rescue vehicles throughout the world. The mission of the Navy Expeditionary Combat Command is to organize, man, train, equip, and sustain Navy Expeditionary Combat Forces to execute combat, combat support, and combat service support missions. One last thing I want to point out are buying commands. I'm not sure if they're actually designated as such, but they're the Military Sea Lift Command, the Strategic Systems Program, Nav C, Nav War, Nav Sub, um, Nav Air, Nav FAC. And I didn't put it here, but Mar Corps, Marine Corps Systems Command is another one for the Navy. Um, one, two others that are not shown on this list, but you know, typically are seen this way in the Department of Navy are the Office of Naval Research and the Marine Corps Installation and Logistics Command. They, the, all of those make up the buying commands. I'll cover each of these separately in their own videos throughout this series. Post a comment or reach out directly uh, to ask for a PDF of this Navy organization chart I use today, and I'll be happy to send it to you. If you found this content valuable, others will too. Please give it a thumbs up so they can find it. If you'd like to connect with me personally, do so on LinkedIn. We often do free training webinars and interview federal buyers. Make sure to sign up for the GovCon Chambers email list to be notified about these opportunities at www.govconchamber.com. Finally, please consider becoming a sustaining member of the GovCon Chamber of Commerce. I'm Neil McDonald, wishing you great success.